evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. How you doing on tonight? Amen. Just in the comments section, just say hello. Throw a wave. Let everybody know you're glad to see them. Amen. I see Sister Linda. How you doing? My mother-in-law. How you doing? Amen. Sister Evelyn. How you doing on this evening? Amen. God bless you real good. It's my prayer. Amen. Hey, Sister Emma. How you doing? Amen. 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 So blessed to be with you all on tonight. Amen. Good evening. Hey, wifey, how you doing? Amen. Hey, Sister Pam, how you doing on tonight? Amen. 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 I thank God for you all on tonight. Hey, how you doing, Sister Shanine? Amen. Amen. God bless you real good. Real good is my prayer. Amen. Uh, on tonight, amen, we're going to, amen, share with you, amen, what the Lord has placed upon our heart on tonight, amen, and we pray to God that you are truly and richly blessed on this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful evening, amen, amen, and amen again, amen. So, uh, we'll share a selection with you on tonight, amen, and uh, we'll read our scripture, and we'll pray, and we'll then share, share the word on tonight, amen, amen. Oh, Chris. Some folks <laughs> would rather <laughs> have holly. Ha <laughs> ha 
choice. Amen. Give God some praise on tonight. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Real good is my prayer. Amen. And we thank God. Amen. For being, for being God. Amen. Amen. And thank, thank the Lord on tonight. Amen. On tonight, we're going to share a word with us on this evening. Amen. And I pray to God that you are richly and you are truly truly blessed turn your bibles to turn your bibles to the book of romans and we're going to take a look at chapter number 16 amen romans chapter 16 romans chapter 16 and we are going to take a look at verses 17 through 19. Amen. Romans 16, 17 through 19. Amen. Romans 16, 17 through 19. Amen. Amen. The King, the New King James Version reads as such. It says, Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them for those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple for your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. Amen. The grass withered, the flower thereof faded away, but the word of our God shall stand for Ever. Amen. Let us pray on tonight. Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to represent your kingdom and to share your word. My prayer is that you would use this vessel, Lord, and bless your people as their ears are attentive to what is shared. Lord, have your way. We pray, Lord, that you show up show out, take over, and do whatever you need to do so that your word goes out, Lord, and does what it was set out to accomplish. I want to say thank you once again, Lord, and I give you the praise, honor, and glory that only you deserve. It's in the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus the Christ we do pray. Amen, amen. Amen again. Amen. Truly God is good. Amen. And he is, he is God. Amen. We thank God for being God. On tonight, amen, we're going to share, amen, a word with you, amen, entitled, Wisely Simple. Amen. Wisely Simple. Amen. And praise the Lord. Now here in the book of Romans, uh, we have the Apostle Paul, and he's sharing with the church at Rome. Amen. He's sharing with the church at Rome. And we know that the Apostle Paul, amen, he went throughout the land, amen, setting up churches in the name of Jesus the Christ. The name that he once persecuted, amen, and then the Lord touched his heart 
and now he fought so hard and diligently, amen, to represent. And so Paul is writing to the church, amen, at Rome. And if you look in chapter 16, Paul helped me to understand that when you do ministry, right, we have to understand that we really need, we really need each other. Because all throughout chapter 16, he talked about greet this one and greet that one and greet the other. So Paul understood that as a Christian, we need other Christians, right? And so Paul helped me to understand that in the beginning of chapter number 16. But then when you get down to verses 17 through 19, he pauses in his greetings and he gives them a word to let them know what was really important for them to understand at that moment and at that time. He paused all of his greetings and he says this, now I urge you brethren. So now what he's saying is, he's saying now I need you to really pay attention to what it is that I'm about to tell you. Because what I'm about to tell you will help you as a Christian. It will help you to walk, move, and have your being as a believer in Jesus, in Jesus the Christ. And so now he's given them some instructions, some instructions to follow. And all throughout, amen, Romans and all the epistles, the first and second Corinthians, first and second Thessalonians, right? All of these are letters to the different churches. And at, to the church at Rome, he shared this with them. He says this. He says, brethren, brethren, he says brethren. So what, do, what, do we, what is he trying to say? He's saying this. He's saying all those who have a what? Like faith in Christ Jesus, right? All those who have placed their faith and their trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Brothers and brothers and sisters. See, Paul talked about really and truthfully two things we need to kind of, we need to kind of look at. He says this, he uses two words throughout this text. He uses the word wise, and he uses the word simple. <laughs> now watch, you see, being wise and simple really and truthfully are total opposites of one another. But he really shared with them <laughs> to be wisely simple, <laughs> right? He says this, if you take a look in verse 19, he says, I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. So he's saying be wise, but be simple, right? Well, pastor, when you take a look at the idea of wise and simple, what does it mean? Well, wise just means this. Wise doesn't just mean that you know the truth. Wise says, I know the truth. And because I know the truth, now I'm going to adjust my life. I'm going to adjust my thinking, I'm going to adjust the way I conduct myself so that now I can take what I know and now apply it to my everyday life. So he's saying be wise, but also he uses the word simple, right? Simple. Well, pastor, what in the world does simple mean? Well, when you take a look at that word simple, it just means pure, right? It means innocent. But if you go a little bit further, it means gullible, <laughs> right? It, it, it means being easily what? Taken advantage of. Amen and praise the Lord. So watch, check it out. So we've got to make sure that when we look at simple and wise, wise means being knowledgeable, being able to apply it, but simple just means naive, amen, without as much information and being able to be what easily, easily influenced, amen. That's why we as parents protect our children 
because there's some things that we know, amen, that they may not know at a certain age, amen, and praise and praise the Lord. So let's take a look at verses 17, at verses 17 through 19 and see what we can learn from the text. It says this, it says, now I urge you, brethren, it says this, it says, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learn watch it now and it says and avoid them all right and avoid them so pastor what is it telling me to do this is what it's telling you to do you as as a christian me as a christian we as believers we have to know, amen, what thus saith the Lord. We have to know the truth about God. We have to know what God really wants us to know. Not something that just sounds like. Not just something that appears to be. He's saying, he says, not those who cause divisions and offenses Contrary to the doctrine or the teachings that you have learned. Paul is letting them know this. That I have taught you the truth. The word teaches you the truth. And he's saying don't you dare let anyone come along to try to sway you. To try to push you. To try to get you to do anything contrary to what you know is right about God and it says this it says it says note them it says mark them out and then it also says to avoid them okay pastor what are you trying to say this is what I'm trying to say see we have got to understand this one thing that as Christians we've got to be on God and avoid teachings that go against sound Doctrine. What do you mean, preacher? See, you've got to understand, not everyone that speaks of God is of God. <laughs> amen and praise the Lord. Not everything, amen, shared in the name of God, amen, is of God. Amen. And so we have to make sure that we understand what God wants us to really know so that no average Joe Blow can come to town and trick us to this being deceived and thinking those things that are not of God. Amen. And praise the Lord. When we look at the gospel of Jesus Christ, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus says, no one comes to the Father but by me. Watch me now. Anything or anybody that comes along, amen, that says anything different from being saved through Christ alone, amen, being saved, amen, and saved some other kind of way, some kind of other method, can I help you, no matter how good it sounds, amen, we know it goes contrary to the doctrine that we have learned, amen, in order to have a relationship with God, you have to have faith in Christ and in Christ alone, amen, and praise the Lord. We can add to that and we cannot take away from it, amen, and praise and praise the Lord. So we've got to be mindful of the word, we've got to be mindful of the teachings of the word of God so we know, amen, and can identify, amen, what is true about, about the word, about the word of God. Look what it says. It says this, they cause division and offenses. Pastor, where you going with this? This is where I'm going with this. You've got to understand that God will deal, amen, with those, <laughs> amen, who called themselves those who represent him. <laughs> Wait a minute, what you mean, preacher? So you've got to understand, we've got churches on every corner. 
We've got di di different denominations. Amen. We've got all the this and that, a costal and the costal and all this other stuff out there. Amen. I'm not making slight of anybody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Amen. First ba Baptist, second Baptist, last Baptist, all this other stuff. But what we've got to understand is this one thing. God is going to deal with us. Amen. As it relates to the truth of his word, not the stuff we put in there and made important. No, he's going to hold us accountable for the divisions. Amen. That have been caused in the body of Christ for the things that have been done to cause offenses and what to split us to split us apart. And we have got to make sure we stand on the word and we let the word be the word and we let God be God and we don't try to change the word to fit what we want, but we let the word be, amen, be what it is, amen, because the word of God, amen, is truth and it is, it is life, amen. So what we've got to understand is this one thing. Really and truthfully, that we've got to understand that we've got to be on guard and avoid those whose teachings go against sound doctrine or good sound teachings. That's why you got to know the word. That's why you got to read your Bible. That's why you got to know what thus saith the Lord. You can't just listen to any and everything and everybody. Amen. And praise the Lord. You've got to ask for wisdom and discernment to know what God wants you to know so that you're able, amen, to apply his word to your life. Look what it says. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, preacher, what you're trying to say. It's saying this. Those that take the word, amen, and they do the opposite of what it says. They teach opposite of what the word says. They do things that is opposite of what's true. They do things opposite of what thus said the Lord. It says this, for those are such that do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible clearly lets me know. Not everyone, Jesus said this, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom. Lord, have mercy. So God has let me know this one thing is that when you look at, amen, those who say they serve Christ, Jesus let me know there'll be some in that great getting up morning, amen, he's going to say, uh, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Amen. And praise the Lord. So we've got to understand that guess what? <laughs> like the Bible said, there's a way that seemed right. But the end thereof is destruction and death. Amen. So we don't want to operate in the I think <laughs> or my opinion. We've got to know what is true according to the word of God. This is what I want you to get. Just because Christ is mentioned in something does not mean Christ is the motivation. <laughs> I'll say it one more time. Just because Christ is mentioned does not mean Christ is the motivation. Amen. Because the Bible lets me know, amen, that man looks at the outward appearance. Man, amen, amen is really, you know, it, 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 it is impressed by outward things, right? And performances. But it says this, it says man judges the outward appearance, but God judges, he judges the heart. So we've got to know, amen, that just because something sounds like, it looks like, we've got to make sure we don't get trapped and tricked, amen, and it's not really of Christ, amen, and praise the Lord. So just because Christ is mentioned doesn't mean that Christ is the motivation, amen. Look what it says. It says they don't serve Christ, but their own belly. <laughs> what 
does that mean? That they're doing what they're doing for their own selfish wants and desires. Watch. And by smooth words <laughs> and flattering speech deceives the heart of the simple. Oh, my goodness. So what is it saying, Pastor? It's saying this. You have individuals <laughs> who will speak in the name of Jesus, right? <laughs> Amen, right? But their heart is not right. Their heart is not in the word. Their heart is not to please God. Their heart is not to fulfill the will of God. Their heart is to fill their own bellies, to fulfill their own selfish desires, to fulfill what? They are seeking at the moment. It says, by smooth words, amen, it sounds good, and flattering, flattering speech, amen, man, that sounds what? It sounds deep, amen, and praise the Lord. Look what it says, deceive the hearts of the simple. People of God, I want you to hear me, and I want you to hear me well. We are living in times where mankind is being deceived, mankind is being tricked, mankind is being fed some stuff that God never ever intended for him to hold on to. Lord have mercy. So you got to get that and you got to get that in your spirit. Amen. You cannot let, amen, what just sounds good, oh Lord, what just sounds right, amen, to guide you. No, you've got to know what thus said the Lord so you can compare what is being said to what is true, amen, about the word of God. Lord, have mercy. So you've got to understand that really and truthfully, it's the heart. It's the what intentions, amen, behind what people do. And what happens is when the intention is not right, a lie going to pop up every now and again. <laughs> a lie going to pop up here. A lie going to get sprinkled in there. A lie going to get thrown in the pot there. And so now, amen, praise the Lord. If you're not watching, amen, if you're not paying attention, amen, you can be tricked bamboozled and taken away, amen, by, amen, the trickery of the enemy. Now watch, check it out. The Bible says this. There's going to be a time when even, amen, the very elect of God will be deceived. Amen. The very elect of God will be deceived. And so we're living in times where people are grabbing on to stuff, holding on to this and holding on to that. I don't know about you, amen. I don't want to grab a hold of something, amen, that guess what, gonna let me down sooner or later. I don't wanna hold on to doctrine, amen, that just tickles my fancy, amen, at the moment, amen, and then later on down the line, I can't do nothing with it. I don't wanna hold on, amen, to teachings, Amen. That just excite me for the moment. No, I want to know the truth about the word. I don't want you to excite me. I want you to impact my life. Amen. And praise the Lord. But everybody in these times, they want to be excited. <laughs> yeah, they want to be entertained. Amen. They, they, they want to be made to feel good. But God had to show me this one thing. Sometimes, God will share a word with you. Amen. It may not feel good to you at the moment, but it is good for you in the long run. <laughs> amen. So we can't get tricked, bamboozled, amen, and pulled away to those things that God never ever wanted us to hold on to. Watch me. Don't be tricked by those who have evil intentions masked with seductive speech. Oh, Jesus. Don't be tricked by those who have evil intentions masked with seductive speech. Lord, have mercy. See, one thing I had to learn and one thing God wants us to learn 
is that we've got to pray for discernment. We have to pray, amen, to be able to identify what's good and what is evil, what is right and what is wrong. I don't care, amen, if everybody in the world, amen, is believing something. If it goes against the word and will of God, amen, can I help you? You've got to do like the old song, you got to go if you got to go all by yourself amen and praise praise the lord so sometimes just sometimes amen there's those with evil intentions and they'll mask it with with the with the seductive it's enticing it sounds good amen makes you feel good amen at the moment but you know what god had to show me is this is that really and truthfully if you know the word if you really know the word you won't be tricked and you won't be deceived. Many of you have heard this illustration before. I think I've used it before. See, there's bank tellers who really, you know, they take in money daily, right? They take in money daily, right? Day after day, they take in money. They count money. When you bring money to the bank to put in the bank, cash to put in the bank, right? That bank teller can know, amen, if you've brought them a counterfeit dollar, a counterfeit uh, a, a bill or not, they can determine that. Let me tell you why. They can determine, amen, that it's a fake bill because they know what a real bill looks like. Amen and praise the Lord. Pastor, what does that have to do with us? It has everything to do with us. You will know the fake hey, because you know the real, amen, if you are real, amen, with Jesus, if you really know who he is, amen, if he's real to you, amen, if you have a connection and a relationship with him, he'll allow you to identify anything, amen, that is what, a counterfeit, <laughs> what, it looks like it fits, but it don't fit, amen, it looks like it's real, but it's not real, it looks like it's something, amen, of value, amen, but it ain't worth anything, <laughs> amen, so you got to get that in your spirit, people of God, that really and truthfully, that we can be seduced and tricked by what? By, by what? Flattering, seductive speech, right? And be led astray, believing stuff. <laughs> believing stuff, amen, that is not real. And let me tell you what it does. If you do that, you've allowed yourself to stand on shaky ground. And when the winds blow, hey! <laughs> Right, and when the breakers dash, amen. The Bible said, amen, in Matthew chapter 7, amen. <laughs> Jesus says, Those who don't heed his word, amen, and don't allow his word to be their foundation, it says, When the wind blows, it says, Great will be its fall. You've got to what you've got to stand on the solid rock. You've got to what make your foundation on the word and the will and the will of God. Amen. Amen and praise and praise the Lord. So we cannot be tricked and, and schemed by what? By seductive, by seductive speech. God will help you. I want to help you tonight. God will help you. Amen. To not be tricked. Right? By those coming with a word that's not of God. Even those who have what? Ill intentions. Right? And I'm going to tell you, God will give you the discernment you need. Pastor, what do I do? <laughs> Amen. So that I can know what to do. So that I can have the wisdom that I need. James said it best. If you lack wisdom, pray for it. Amen. And God gives it liberally. Right? He gives it, amen, without any complaint. God said, you want wisdom? Here it is. He'll dump it on you. Amen. But, amen, if you allow yourself to walk around to be easily, what? Easily uh, tricked. 
easily influenced. Anybody can come along your way and get you to think this and get you to think that. That's, what, that's what's going on in the church today, right? The church has been impacted by the world. So now the church sometimes looks just like the world. Amen, right? Doing this and doing that, listening to this and listening to that. Amen. Going this way and going that way, accepting this and accepting that. And God says, hold on. You know the truth. Stand on it. Amen. Stand on the truth of the word. Look what it says in verse uh, 19. It says, for your obedience has become known to all. So when he's letting them know, he says, now watch. He says, I see you. <laughs> People see you. Right? You've been doing what's right. You've been living right. You've been doing what thus saith the Lord. But look what he wants you to understand. He says this, he says, therefore I am glad on your behalf. But look what he tells them. Real simple, look what he tells them. He says, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. <laughs> I got to say it one more time. It says, I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. Amen. So what is he telling them? He's telling them this. He says, I want you to practice discernment. Amen. If you look in the book of Hebrews, it talks about how one gets discernment by taking the word and practicing the word. So when you get the word, don't just know the word. You got to live the word. You got to see the word, what, manifest in your life. And as you what? As you use it day to day, day to day, in all that you do and everything that you're a part of, then now you build your discernment. But you're not going to build discernment if you just lean to your own understanding. You just let any and everything, what, push you. You a certain direction. Every, the Bible talks about every wind of doctrine. The Bible says, don't be so easily swayed, right? Check it, right? The Bible says, try the spirit. What? To see whether it is of God. So don't let the anything said or done just be done and you don't check it. Amen. By the spirit. God will give you the discernment that you need. It says, be wise. And what is good. So it's saying this. Know what is good. And be able to apply. What is good. Amen. Watch me now. He says. He says. You, you be wise in what is good. That means knowing it. Right. And living it. Amen. Right. Knowing it. And living it. Be wise in what is good. So you ought to be. Amen. You ought to be, amen, you ought to be a, a, a high school graduate, amen. You ought to get your bachelor's degree, you ought to get your master's degree, you ought to get your PhD, amen, and what is good, amen. And can I help you? You don't need a college degree <laughs> to be wise, amen, because they got some educated fools, amen. The Lord have mercy. Now, I'm not knocking getting the education, but God showed me a long time ago, the Bible says there were times when he used unlearned men. That means they didn't have any formal training, but by his spirit, by his wisdom, he spoke to them and he used them in a way, amen, that baffled the minds of those who thought they really had it going on. Amen. And pray. so he says, be wise. In what is good. Amen. So you ought to be an expert in what is right. <laughs> Amen. And praise and praise the Lord. Look what it says though. It says it be simple concerning evil. What does that mean, preacher? You ought to get to a point. <laughs> you ought to get to a point to where really and truthfully it's hard for you to do evil. Right? You ought to get to a point where you are naive in what is evil. You're at a point where it's like you don't even have a taste for what is evil. Right? You're not even trying to practice what is evil. What is evil? Guess what? I don't want to know nothing about that. Amen. But you know, I'm learning. Amen. There's some people, amen, I don't care. When there's a scheme involved, they're involved. When there's trickery involved, they're involved. When there's a scam involved, they're involved. When somebody's trying to get manipulated, they're involved. But God says this, no, don't you be involved in that stuff. Don't let yourself be yielding to what is evil. You ought to be simple and naive. Hey! And doing the things 
that are evil. Amen. You ought not be an expert. <laughs> an expert in wrong. <laughs> you ought not be an expert of doing the wrong thing. You ought not be an expert. Amen. In doing what is what is evil. And God will give you discernment, but you got to ask him for it. And you got to be on God. We're living in some crazy times, people. And we've got to understand that God can give us what we need. Amen. God will give us what we need. Amen. What we need in order, amen, in order to know what is right and in order to know what is wrong. Amen. And praise the Lord. So you gotta, you gotta get that, you gotta get that in your spirit. So you got to, you got to be an expert in what is right. Amen. And you've got to be a failure in taking part in evil. Amen. So if there was a class on what is right, amen, you ought to get all A's. But if there's a class, amen, on what is evil, you ought to fail that class. Amen. You ought not be a, a, an expert on doing the wrong thing. Amen. And praise, praise the Lord. So we've got to make sure, we've got to make sure we understand that. And you've got to understand this. People of God, I want to leave you with this. The Bible lets us know that in certain times, right, those will come in the name of Christ, right? And they're going to come as angels of light, right? Angels of light, right? They're going to appear to be of God. They're going to appear to be spiritual. They're going to appear to be those that are representing Christ Jesus, right? Amen. <laughs> and guess what? I hate to bust your bubble. Amen. Yes, there are those, amen, praise the Lord, amen, that will come as those who say they are proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're going to come in the form of preachers, pastors, evangelists, those, amen, who call themselves bishops and apostles and all this stuff. Yes, amen, they're going to come in those forms. But you've got to understand, the Bible lets us know that you cannot allow yourself just to fall victim, amen, of wrong teaching just because it's done in the name of Jesus the Christ. You've got to be able to identify, amen, what's of God, amen, and what's not of God, amen. But you've got to train yourself to do that, amen. I'll share this, amen. I love, amen. I love my mother and I thank God, amen. I thank God, amen, for my mother. And my mother, while we were watching TV one night, I'll never forget it. We were watching TV one night, and what happened, a certain preacher came on. Now watch. I can't remember who that preacher was, but I'll never forget her words. He started speaking, and my mother said, Kyle, turn that off. And I'm like, wait a minute. Mama, what you mean? Kyle, turn that off. Change the TV. And I'm like, I know my mama's a Christian. I know my mama loves the Lord. I know that she loves the word. But the preacher came on and she instructed me to change the channel. Pastor, what are you trying to get me to see? This is what I'm trying to get you to understand. Mother knew that the individual that had popped up on the screen, a man, was not the real deal. And he was actually a counterfeit. <laughs> And so she, she was teaching me and training me at that moment to identify what is of God and what is not of God. And people of God, can I help you? Just because we can't say that maybe mother or father or somebody, amen, may have what not taught us, it's no excuse. It is for us what individually, amen, individually, to know within ourselves, amen, what's good and what is evil. So what does God want us to be? He wants us to be wisely simple, amen. He wants you to be wise in what is good, but simple in what is evil, amen. Amen and praise the Lord. So I thank God tonight for you all and I pray to God that you are blessed in some kind of way. And I pray that you received what it is that God 
had put upon my heart to share with you on tonight real briefly. Number one, be on guard and avoid those whose teaching go against sound doctrine. Number two, just because Christ is mentioned does not mean Christ is the motivation. Amen. Number three, amen. Don't be tricked by those who have evil intentions but mask it with seductive speech. And the last one, be an expert in what is right, but a failure in taking part in what is evil. God bless you real good, saints of God, amen. And my prayers that all of us on tonight, we be wisely simple, amen. God bless you real good is my prayer on tonight. Amen. And I want to pray with you and I want to pray for you on tonight. Amen. And I pray to God. Amen. I pray to God. Amen. That you were blessed on tonight. People of God, our world, our world is seeking to shift, to shift, to shift God's word. Right? To really, to, 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 to make it warped. But we can't let the world warp the word of God. We've got to be real with it and we've got to know what thus said the Lord. Amen and amen again. Amen. So I want to pray with you, pray for you on tonight. Amen. And I pray to God that you, that you are truly and richly blessed. Amen. And that God hears our prayer and answers our prayer on tonight. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we come to you tonight as humbly, Lord, and sincere as we know how to, how to be, Father God. Lord, we know, Father God, we've fallen short of your glory. We've fallen short of your will. We've fallen short of your word. We've fallen short of your way. But Lord, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, you, you've been so good to us, dear God. Lord, we know, Lord, that Lord, we, can't, we can't make it without you. Lord, tonight, there's so many people, Lord, dealing with so many things. Lord, there are those, Lord, who are dealing with bereavement and the death of a loved one. Those who are sick in their bodies. Those in mental turmoil, Father God. Those, dear God, who are trying to discern right from wrong, good and evil. There are those who are being manipulated. Lord, there are those, dear God, who need a word from you. There are those who are confused on tonight. Have your way, Father God. Touch right now, Father God. Meet them right where they are, Father God. Lord, someone on tonight is lost. Touch their hearts, Lord, to receive Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. By faith, by faith, by faith. Knowing, dear God, that Jesus did the work. They just need the faith. Pray right now, Father God, that you would just have thine own way. I pray for... Lord, our region, our parish, our state. Lord, I pray a special prayer for our school district on tonight. My prayer on tonight, Lord, is that you would allow each one of them, dear God, to understand it's not about any one of them, but it's about what is right and what is right by our children. Lord, I pray you just do whatever you need to do to allow what is right to be done. Lord, I'm praying for that, Lord, and I'm believing you for that on tonight, Father God. Whatever you need to do, do it, Father God. Lord, we thank you tonight for being so kind. We thank you tonight, Lord, for all your many blessings. Lord, we pray, Lord, that we leave this live tonight, Lord, with Lord, wisdom and understanding and, Lord, discernment and that as we go out and about that, Lord, as we, Lord, learn of your word and, Lord, like the Bible says, Lord, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God and we listen and read and study and learn your word, Lord, that we're able to look at life through the lens of the word of God. Lord, thank you for what it is that you have done already and thank you for what it is that you will do for us. Lord, in the times to come. Lord, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. Lord, all glory, honor, and praise to you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus, 
mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And all that love the Lord, say amen. 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 And amen again. Amen. God bless you, saints of God. Amen. And my prayer, dear God, is that God would just touch and do whatever he needs to do with you and through you on tonight and even in the times to come. God bless you, saints of God. Amen. And I pray to God that you were blessed on tonight. Amen. I just want to just shout out to all the parents uh, this past Sunday, our youth leader, uh, youth leader uh, Sister Kaisha Johnson, all those involved that made it happen, all the people that just came out and supported our children. And so we just thank God. We had such a blast on Sunday. Amen. And we just thank God for your assistance, your help, and anything you did. People of God, we've got to invest in our children. We've got to make a, a, a special effort to train them up. We've got to make a special effort to pour into them. We've got to make a special effort to teach them right from wrong. Because why? we got to understand that we can't expect the world to teach them. It's our job. It's our job. Right? Now, we can't guarantee that they're going to turn out perfect and, you know, do great, amazing things. But we, guess what? Our chances are better. Amen. If we rear them up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. We've got to do that, saints of God. And we can't do it. Amen. According to our own understanding, we got to go back to the book. We got to go back to the Everything we need is in the book. It's in the word. But it seems as though we're living in a world and society where people just want to ignore what God has said. God don't want us to go toward, you know, what sounds good. No, let the word be what it is, right? Let it be what it is, amen. So God bless you, amen. God bless you real good, amen, is my prayer. Good night, y'all. Love y'all real good, amen. And go out, amen, and tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody about Jesus, amen. God bless you. Good night, y'all.